Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Today is an exciting day because Meta finally released their ImageBind AI model. So the reason it's called ImageBind is because it's binding um, six different angles of multimodal inputs all into one model. So basically it means that whether it's an input of text, depth, heat map, audio, or IMU, or image or video, you can go in between any of those and get any of those out of the model. So there are a few different things you can do with this. The structure is kind of interesting. Their initial points are vague, but the cool thing is I think most of you will be able to run this. So their demo for this is actually not that interesting, just to go ahead. Uh, most of the image to audio, audio to image, text to image and audio, and audio to image to image is just more like showing that this model can classify between them. So basically showing that if I click an image of a dog, that this can tell that it's a dog and find that as a tagged item in the data set. So it found audio that sounds like a dog. It found audio that sounds like a tiger and it found audio that sounded like a bird, which is cool. Um, audio to image is also good. Basically this is showing that they're tokenizer for all these different models works um, because in effect every uh, degree of multimodality is its own model at some level some of these are more interesting than others see here they're saying look you can go from a single text prompt audio and images so that's kind of cool again showing with a single degree you can get multi degrees yeah single degree of input multi degree of output and uh, audio and image to image is also pretty cool basically showing that um the data set isn't like brute force trained with saying like here's apples with the sound of water and here or here's a beach with the sound of a dog a lot of this technically could be happening just with the tokenizer, right? So like T5, but they do a lot of work a little bit later to show that that's actually not what's going. The most impressive one here is audio. It's like single audio input degree to generated image. And what's cool is initially when I was looking at this, I thought, oh, well, you know, we've all seen uh, specialized models that can extract text features or I, kind of what's going on in audio detect and then you know take that and turn it into a prompt and generate something uh what's cool here is the way this model works and we don't know a lot about it just yet it's actually not doing that it's saying well you know the the audio to feature model talks the same language as the image and video generation model so yeah why not just do a single shot so this is rain a dog barking a little weird looking and an engine uh now this seems like, oh, like who hasn't done this before? But the thing is that I think is kind of cool is as more people use this, I'm really eager to see how fine tuned the, uh, the audio feature extraction is. Because if you think about it, like if you're listening to audio, uh, there's a lot going on, right? Like you could just have rain or you could have rain hitting water or rain slapping against leaves and then hitting water. You can have a thunderstorm, uh, you can have wind. So the direction of rain could be somewhere else. Um, the one interesting one here is um, this does sound like some rain hitting a like hitting glass, and that's sort of exhibited here. The multimodality is cool because it, it's a really interesting way of adding a lot of context in a way that otherwise would be really time consuming or kind of hard to do going between different models. Their quick oversight is also pretty cool. Um, it's high level, so if you want way more than this, the paper is linked below. And, um, you know, there's not a, a ton to go over here. Um, they pretty much talk about uh, using um, sensor fusion as types of input, uh, basically saying that, like, we you have these six degrees of input for now, but generally, like, in the future, you could use 12 degrees of input uh, since basically each level of modality is just another vector of input and a vector that we can use with this existing data set to leverage, which is kind of cool. Uh, now, you might be thinking, like, what is depth, what's a heat map, and then what are these? Um, so depth is a form of segmentation, and we've covered SAM before. Uh, so it's a form of segmentation that is a little bit guessing, right? Because you don't have a camera, you don't have, like, LiDAR to look at right there. But it's a way for image segmentation models to understand um, the subject in a visual input. Similar to, like, how if you had audio input and you had someone yelling in a meeting room, um, ideally the loudest subject in a room is seen as the, the subject that is speaking most presently, right? So a depth model is just a way of expressing visually what is most present or what is the most present subject in an image. 
Um, so that could be like a conductor on a stage or a performer on a stage. Yeah, and then a heat map, um, this is a more contextually aware form of segmentation. And IMU is basically motion awareness. So if you see someone walking or you see a ball getting close to the camera or in audio, this would be like a car passing a microphone. That is what IMU is. The other thing that's interesting and that makes me really think that this is probably like the aftermath of some big project that was part of their metaverse initiative is they do a lot of talking about uh, 3D depth, 3D shape. And they it's funny because with a heat map, they actually mention using uh, thermal data for that. And uh, IMU basically is just, the, it's a way of measuring motion. And there are digital like machine vision ways of doing this. And there, there are a lot of ways that they talk about this in the paper. So they talk about using existing kind of like, or building off existing work. So make a scene with something they built off of here. Again, they talk about sensory input, um, a lot of cool applications. This is the most prescient bit I want to talk about though. So basically what they're showing here is that um, what they're calling cross-modal retrieval is basically that um, you get a better input with more input, right? So if you have audio context, uh, you have a, an idea of a subject here. If you couple that with video or, or images, then uh, if, depending on how this model exports, like if this hears a train and this sees a train, then uh, the weights that make you think it's a train are elevated. And then basically here, uh, if you can compare the outputs of the train, you can start to understand, okay, like is my subject like the guy next to the train or should my subject be, you know, the train? And basically they're saying, you know, based on how we layer these without doing an intermediate step in between, we can get a really accurate text output that basically describes as much contextual information about a scene as possible. So for instance, a, a train pulls into a busy station, wind blows as a train moves through a grassy landscape, etc. What's also interesting is they show that you can also get, do pretty well without that. So embedding space arithmetic is basically spatial awareness of what's going on within a scene and mathematically how you place balance on that. So how you say, well, how many subjects can you have in a scene or how many birds or background things can you have in a scene without it clouding kind of what's going on in an environment. Um, so basically saying like, what's the upper limit of the models right now? They're saying there was a focus on that and we acknowledge that to get good output, which is why you can do something like hearing penguins and then getting a generated image of penguin. This is very nicely put together when they say, by aligning six modalities embedding into a common space, ImageBind enables cross-modal retrieval of different types of content that aren't observed together. The addition of embedding from different modalities as they naturally compose their semantic. An audio to image generation by using our audio embeddings with pre-trained Dolly 2 decoder to work with clip text embeddings works pretty well. They also mentioned Dino V2, which we made a video about. This is a very academic way of saying it, but when, what they mean by observed to get that aren't normally observed together, they basically mean that normally all of these models, if they're specialized, they don't, they don't talk the same way to each other. And it's hard to gauge if they're as good at doing their one thing like audio or video with each other. And since Meta built all these, they can have a higher degree of confidence. So the other thing that they say here is image aligned self supervised learning shows that the performance of our model can actually improve by using very few training examples. So they're saying we can train this as it is now with less input and have better inference and outputs than specialized models generally. They're also really big on audio and depth encoder, which are some of the hardest things being worked on in the space right now. They were even pretty big about bragging about it. Um, so saying here's depth accuracy, audio accuracy, and basically saying, look, like our systems with ImageBind as a collective system based on the current state of the art are much more accurate. And to be fair, they are. They also go forward saying they want to eventually have this properly produced video output. Also, you know, they, they talk about contextual generation with a lot of these different inputs for like video sequences. Now, quickly to get to the code and one of the most exciting things that we found in here. So like Llama, um, the model or like the license that they released this under, and for those of you who aren't developers, this is basically like the set of rules as saying to what you can do with the code they release. It's not really open source. It's what they call the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike 4.0 license. Now it sounds like you know, that that's all happy go lucky and Creative Commons is great, but actually this is a pretty restrictive license. So they're very restrictive on who can actually contain the weights. 
and what you can actually infer with them. Uh, the funny thing is someone has actually like just flat out asked this question in the form of a pull request. <laughs> and they just said, yeah, propose license change to ALV2, which is actually an open source license. And Facebook hasn't responded yet. So we'll see kind of what they say. Another interesting point here is that multimodal crosstalk between coders and models like this is um, a pivotal next step in a paper that a guy named Jan LeCun wrote talking about kind of the next steps towards a positive or negative outcome of AGI. So this will be linked in the description if you want to watch that, if you want to read this. For the finale, they actually mention pretty blankly how to use this, uh, more so than they did with um, Deep Floyd, in my opinion. We'll have a full video on like how to use this, but what's interesting is in their demo, right, to run this locally or like with your own code, they have the checkpoint download, it's pretty cool. You'll notice that each degree of what they mention uh, has its own model. The biggest one though, is when they set this up with example code, uh, they're not using the CPU, they're actually just using a single GPU. So in theory, it might be slow and the resolution might be limited, but uh, it looks like they're saying, at least with this example code, that you could run this on a single GPU. Now, how well it would run on like a RTX 3080 relative to a 4090 or an A100, I don't know yet. I haven't personally tested yet, but uh, we'll make a video on that. So I uh, hope you guys thought this was cool. I hope you learned something. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.